wanted to start out today doing and actually saying something that's important. I'm going to start by saying I'm in favor of VAR, of Video Assistant Referee. Many of you, of course, will probably jump up in there and say, how can you? How can you actually be in favor of something like that? Such a travesty to the game. Oh, it takes away the rhythm. It takes away the naturality. It takes away everything that you could possibly want in a particular sport that is human. And it's... Guys, technology is here to stay. You have to embrace it. And in fact, what's more human than wanting to claim for justice? And I'm talking about in the sporting fashion, of course. And if you want to go into the social aspect as well, we can go into that in another conversation. Here's the thing. VAR will never work if there's not a collective will to want to adjust to it. VAR will never work if there's a collective, if there's not a collective will to help it be able to work the way it's supposed to. In theory, it's great. It's like any other thing, any other theory or any other uh, philosophy. In, on, on, in theory, on paper, it's always going to be a wonderful thing. Now, the problem is to translate it from paper and turn it into practice. The problem with VAR is that we have individuals that really don't like to be told what to do. And case in point, the referees. Referees, for the most part especially the head referee, the main referee, the one on the pitch, not the one on the ones on the side. And those are complicit too, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Those referees, for the most part, do not want to be told that they're wrong. Because they live in a position, in a situation, where it can be political, it can be also ego, it can also be a lot of things that these individuals want to be told that they're right or they're not wrong and that's a problem when referees are not held accountable in the same way that players that commit mistakes and their mistakes are always shown and they have to stand up and face the media and face their critics and face the coaches and face whoever else that's a problem referees aren't necessarily held accountable I'm talking about held accountable in the right way because you know hey what, what did you see there Mind you, when you hear me call matches, when you hear me do match commentary, and there is a controversial foul, one of the things I always mention is look at where the referee's standing, and where are they when that foul occurs? Are they, be, are they being blocked? Because you can have 500 different angles, and you can call things differently depending on where you're standing. Let's, keep, let's get that straight. And that's something that you are not told in many broadcasts. That's what you're not told by many journalists. The fact that things look different depending on where you're standing. And I'm not talking about a, phys- uh, a philosophical or, or astrophysical or, or, or any type of theoretical type. I'm just talking about f- physical presence. Depending on where you are and you see something, you have completely different versions and different perspectives of how you see that particular incident. Add to that the fact that you have... something seconds to make a decision without 26 or depending on uh, on the production you have 7, 8, 10, 26 different camera angles to look different zooms, different angles different speeds, different (laughs) whatever to be able to make a call here's the thing and I've always mentioned again I use this as my reference and I'll play a game with the fans say if by the second angle you haven't been able to decide you go with the referee Because it's a, it's a hard profession, or it's a hard vocation, if you will, because some don't consider it a profession, and some aren't even professionalized. So you can't really consider it a profession if it's not being paid or remunerated in a fashion where they can be considered professional. So here, here's the thing. When you start looking at referees, understand that problem first, but also understand the other one. That there, there are egos. There, there are egos within those fraternities where some, you know, are better. Or some get called up to do more prestige assignments based on merit or based on political favor. And when you have those egos going around, and and those egos start mixing up with calls that they made, and all of a sudden they're being told from elsewhere, "Hey, you got the call wrong," and it's still up to the referee to make the decision. Say, "Yeah, okay, fine, we'll change it." Remember. In a lot of cases, it's up to the referee on the pitch to make the decision to switch to, to overturn that ruling. If he decides he doesn't have to, he won't. 
So understand that part too. Understand my message at the beginning. VAR will only work if the people involved have the will to want it to work. That's that's the issue. If it's not working, a lot of times it's because the people that are executing it either aren't prepared enough, they're not knowledgeable enough about the technology, which seems to be crazy because it's a bunch of camera angles and they have more camera angles to get the best decision possible. That's another thing. People want VAR only when the op- opposing team is going to be affected, not when their team is going to be affected. So it has to go both ways. You have to take it the same way as, it, as you have to be benefited by it. It's not perfect because no science is perfect. No concept is perfect right off the shoot, right off the bat. It's never going to be perfect right away. It's going to suffer its knocks. It's going to suffer its processes and changes and evolutions and, and, and subtractions and additions. And sometimes maybe even when things start going through, you start adding multiplying. I doubt that will happen in this type of thing. But keep in mind that that is something that can occur. You're going to have a lot of additions. You're going to have a lot of subtractions. The problem is sometimes they start adding too fast and now the problem is subtracting. Because the criteria is there. Hey, look, this foul occurred. Why isn't it being called? Oh, well, we're not doing that anymore. Or we're not considering it. Then that becomes a problem when you start adding too quick. When you start subtracting, that's when the complaints start to arise. When it comes to VAR, it is a slow process, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be an ever-evolving process. And we've seen it with, with other leagues. We just saw it with the NFL just a few days ago. And how they start to redefine what a catch is. So understand this. It is a process. But the process has to be helped by the people that are working it. If they continue with their interpretations and they aren't told, hey, you did this wrong. The best way to, 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 to have a, a referee be accountable, suspend them. And that's something that pro referees at, seem, at times seem that they don't want to do. When you see some of the calls that are made in Major League Soccer or made... In other countries, I don't want to pick on, on pro referees just alone because because poor refereeing is, is not just something, an exclusivity of, of the United States. You go to many parts of the world and you start to see referees and you're like, what were they drinking? What were they smoking? When they, when, I mean, just as I'm recording in Argentina, there was a foul today that didn't exist. And, and they're in the referee and in the match that, that Banfield drew earlier today ended up getting a draw. And you see one of the penalties, and, and there was nothing. I mean, it was, one of the headlines was like, Al Pacino doesn't, can't act the way this, this guy did. And in case you, you want to get a better reference, I'll put it on Twitter, or I'll put it on different, my different social media uh, posts, so you get an idea of what that cross-reference I'm talking about right now uh, means. But if you have those referees, and obviously we're talking about Argentina, who doesn't have VAR in place, but if those calls are being made without it, and those interpretations and those egos more than anything else, that I am wrong, I'm right above anything else, you have to start to really question the individuals that are here. So why, why don't you clean house and start bringing in the new refs, the ones that are willing to learn and willing to, to take their knocks to be able to have the best possible opportunity to take those high pro, higher profile assignments, I guess you could say. That, to me, is the most important thing to look at. That, to me, is where VAR needs to change. Because if you put in front of a uh, bunch of TV screens in a booth, the people that are misinterpreting the rules, the ones that are misinterpreting actions, intentions, or actually trying to guess intentions, they, and they do it on the pitch, imagine what they're going to be doing in front of, in front of a, a bunch of TV screens. If they're, if they're wrong on the pitch, they're going to be wrong in the booth. So you have to start looking at newer blood. You have to start looking at newer people. You have to start re-educating or removing these types of referees. You have to start bringing in individuals who already don't have those bad habits or those tendencies to make calls based on whatever mannerisms or whatever attitudes they have towards the game on their interpretation, not on what the rules of the game actually say. That, to me, is how VAR won't start necessarily working better, but it will take that step towards being more functional. (laughs) 
Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to subscribe to Beyond the Pitch. You can also subscribe to this one as BTP Daily, as I'll be giving you my thoughts and whatever comes up on the top of my head on a daily basis. Subscribe on Apple, on iTunes, on uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud, whatever platform of you prefer listening to any type of audio, we're most likely going to be there, so check it out. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Juan G underscore Arango. You can also follow our podcast at Beyond the Pitch. And make sure that you're following because a lot of interesting things are coming up with Beyond the Pitch. Some great interviews, lots of great content. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you give some ratings. We love to hear from you. Five stars is wonderful. One star is okay with us. We're cool with it. We can always find ways to improve or even suggest guests that we should bring on. That's always a wonderful thing. So make sure that you do that. Make sure you follow us on iTunes and any other platform. And we'll be constantly updating and giving you the best content in football.